This quick video is about the Malnutrition Universal Screening Tool, or also known as MUST. This tool is nationally validated and is used to determine someone's risk of malnutrition. It is used within care homes, hospitals and within the community. This video has been produced by the Nutrition and Dietetic Department within NHS Tayside. Within part one, the main aim is to identify the risk factors and consequences of malnutrition, know how to screen for malnutrition and know how to calculate the MUST score. Malnutrition is a huge issue around the world with it affecting at least 3 million people in the UK and 33 million people across Europe. Malnutrition affects people of all ages. Malnourished adults account for approximately 30% of hospital admissions, 35% of care home admissions, 15% of outpatient clinic attendance and 10% of those visiting their general practitioner. There are many risk factors which can lead to malnutrition. This includes progressive illnesses such as motor neuron disease, Parkinson's or dementia. Acute illnesses resulting in constipation, diarrhoea, nausea or vomiting. If someone has a poor appetite or a small dietary intake. Having poor mental health problems such as anxiety or depression. Problems with swallowing which may require texture modification. Having poor oral health such as ill-fitting dentures or having a sore mouth and also postural problems or having dexterity issues. There are many consequences for someone who becomes malnourished. This includes an increased risk of infections, poor wound healing, self-neglect, an increased risk of falls and also inactivity. This in turn can lead to increased dependency and the need for medical intervention or treatment. It can also result in increased use of medication and the need for hospital admissions. Malnutrition can also cause micronutrient deficiencies. It is important to note the consequences of dehydration. Mild dehydration can cause dark urine, headaches, dizziness, tiredness, UTIs, constipation, poor concentration and passing urine less often. Severe dehydration can lead to sunken eyes, confusion, irritability, rapid weak pulse, cold hands and feet and reduced skin elasticity. There are many signs of unintentional weight loss to look out for. This includes loose fitting dentures, loose rings or watches or clothes, thinner limbs, an increase in colds and infections, loose shirt collar, waistbands or belts, poor wound healing or loose slippers and shoes. Nutritional screening helps identify those at risk. MUST is a nationally validated tool used in hospitals and care homes. There are five steps to MUST. We will go through how to calculate each step. Step one involves calculating someone's body mass index or BMI. BMI is a measure of body fat based on someone's height and weight. The calculation is weight in kilograms divided by height in metres squared. For example, John weighs 74.6 kilograms and he is 1.78 metres tall. This gives him a BMI of 23.6 kilograms per metre squared. Bapin has useful tools to help work out the BMI score. These can be found on their website. 
Here you can see that a BMI of greater than 20 scores 0, a BMI between 18.5 and 20 scores 1, and less than 18.5 scores 2. If it is not possible to obtain a height or a weight, alternative measurements can be used. This includes ulna length, demi span, or the use of subjective criteria. This will be discussed further in part two. Fluid retention can impact on someone's weight, which can lead to inaccurate BMI scores masking malnutrition. If someone has ascites or peripheral edema, determine the severity and deduct this from the patient's actual weight. Please note this is an estimation. This dry weight can then be used to calculate the MUST score. Here is an example of working out fluid retention. A patient has oedema up to his knees. He weighs 72 kilograms. To estimate his dry weight, five kilograms should be subtracted from his actual weight due to moderate peripheral oedema. His estimated dry weight would therefore be 67 kilograms. This weight should then be used to calculate must. In the case of an amputation, add the following percentage in kilograms to the patient's actual weight. This will help calculate a more accurate BMI. Select the appropriate percentage using the table. An example of estimating weight if there is an amputation is as follows. A woman has had her full arm amputated. She weighs 54 kilograms. To correct the weight, 4.9% of her actual weight should then be added. This equates to 2.6 kilograms. Therefore, the corrected weight is 56.6 kilograms. This weight should then be used for mass calculations. Step two of MUST is calculating a weight loss score. To calculate percentage weight loss, you can follow an equation such as the one on the screen. Firstly, you have to find the difference in someone's weight. So the heaviest weight is subtracted by the current weight. The weight difference is then divided by the heaviest weight and multiplied by 100 to get a percentage. If you look at the case study at the bottom of the slide, you can see that John currently weighs 74.6 kilograms. John used to weigh 86.9 kilograms six months ago. The difference between these two weights is 12.3 kilograms. John therefore has experienced a 14.2% weight loss in the last six months. Bapin has useful tools to help work out the weight loss score. These can be found on their website. Step two is calculated using the unplanned weight loss in the past three to six months. Score zero for under 5%, score one for five to 10% and score two for over 10%. The third step involves determining an acute disease effects score. This step only applies to those who are critically ill in a catabolic state who have not eaten or are not expected to eat for over five days. This is unlikely to happen outside of the hospital. This step could apply to someone with dysphagia, an intestinal obstruction, unconsciousness, a head or critical injury. It is important to note that must is not appropriate if someone is approaching end-of-life care. Also aim to treat any underlying issues such as nausea, vomiting or pain which may be affecting someone's oral intake. If a patient is acutely ill and there has been or is likely to be no nutritional intake for greater than five days then this step will be scored two. Please note step three is either a score two or zero. Step four is the overall risk of malnutrition. 
This is worked out by adding steps 1, 2 and 3 together. This score will help determine what the next steps are. Step 5 is the must management guidelines. This slide shows what to do depending on the must score. Most importantly, if someone scores two or more, it means they are at high risk of malnutrition. In this case, you should refer to local must management guidelines and refer the patient to the nutrition and dietetic service if you are concerned about their nutritional needs. For more information and tools on how to calculate the must score, please visit BAPEN's website. The aim of part two is to know how to measure height using a stadiometer and by ulna length, and also know how to measure weight using stand-on scales, sit-on scales and wheelchair scales. A quick guide to measuring weight using stand-on scales. All scales should be calibrated in line with local policy. The scales should be placed on a hard and flat surface free of any hazards. Before weighing the person, ensure they do not have anything in their pockets and if they are wearing heavy clothing, please keep a note of this. Ask the person to step onto the scales whilst offering your arm of support if needed. Once they are balanced on the scales, ask them to relax and then record the reading to the nearest 0.1 kilograms. A guide to measuring weight using sit-on scales. All scales should be calibrated in line with local policy. Scales should be used on a hard and flat surface, free of any hazards. Before weighing the person, ensure they do not have anything in their pockets, and if they are wearing heavier clothing, please keep a note of this. Once the person is comfortably in the chair, ensure their feet are sitting on the footrests. If they have extra equipment, such as a catheter bag, please keep a note of this, for example, if it was empty or full. This helps ensure each weight check is accurate. Once sitting still, record the weight to the nearest 0.1 kilograms. A guide on how to measure weight using wheelchair scales. Again, all scales should be calibrated and set to zero before weighing. The scales should be used on a hard and flat surface, free of any hazards. Before weighing the person, ensure they do not have anything in their pockets, and if they are wearing heavier clothing, please keep a note of this. Please document the weight of the wheelchair and take note if the cushions and foot plates were attached. You may find it easier reversing the wheelchair on and off the scales. Once the person is comfortably in the chair, ensure their feet are sitting on the footrests. If they have extra equipment, such as a catheter bag, please keep a note of this. For example, if the catheter bag was full or empty. This helps ensure each weight check is accurate. Once the person is sitting still on the wheelchair scales, record the weight to the nearest 0.1 kilograms. You can then work out the weight of the person by subtracting the weight of the wheelchair. A guide on measuring height using a stadiometer. The stadiometer should be placed on a flat and hard surface. If possible, the person should remove their footwear and step on facing away from the stadiometer. Hips and shoulders should be aligned forward. Ensure the person's head is not tilted upwards, but facing forward instead. Ask the person to take a deep breath then lower the head plate down until it is gently pressed against the top of their head. From there, record the height, which can be seen between the two red arrows. Once the height has been recorded to the nearest 0.01 centimetres, you can then lift the head plate and ask the person to step away. Lastly, we have a guide on how to measure height using ulna length. This method can be used as an alternative to standing height if a person is bed bound or unsteady on their feet. Ask the person to place their arm across their chest with their hand touching the opposite shoulder or gently guide the person into this position. Measure from the wrist bone, 
to the tip of the elbow and record this to the nearest 0.1 centimeters. By using the conversion chart, you can convert the length into an estimated height. The chart is split into gender and age groups to help give a more accurate estimation. It should be noted that height was obtained through the ulna length. These conversion charts can be found on Bapin's website.